Hey, Fitchy here, back at the game with another one. I'm here the week now, uh, working on this 56 Pontiac. Um, trying to get the brakes straightened away on it, to get some wiring straightened away on it, the handbrake straightened away on it. It's a bunch of little things got to be done on it, and it's not good content. So, uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Over the last, say, 15 years, I've been photo documenting all the projects and everything I've done over the years. I have thousands upon thousands of photographs. I only started taking video like last year or the year before. So uh, what I'm going to do here now is something a little bit different now. I'm going to go dig out one of my old projects and I'm going to uh, do a little slideshow and uh, show you what I built. Mm, it was in 2011. It's a little trailer that I built. Uh, myself and Bill Norris built it. Uh, Bill's a good friend of mine. We traveled back and forth to Moncton a number of years. If you're not familiar with Moncton Nationals, it's a car show here on the East Coast of Canada. And it's been going off now all close on 20 years, if not 20 years. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to take you through the steps now of uh, this little trailer and what me and Bill put together in 30 days. Uh, so we have some luggage to tow behind a little tea bucket project that I had uh, way back in 2011. So stick around. Here we have a tea bucket that I own from 2000 until 2013. Uh, I stretched it. I uh, made steel hood for it, steel fenders for it. It had a big block Chevy down in it. Um, you know, it was a fun little car in its time. But back in 2011, we decided we we're going to take it to the Nationals. We had nowhere to put luggage. So myself and Bill Norris got together and decided we we're going to build a little trailer to tow behind this to go to the Nationals. First thing I did is I did some research and looked around and got some ideas on what to build. And I wanted something simple, but I didn't want just a simple box. And I wanted to use old car parts that I had kicking around to build something out of. And uh, so here's what I come up with. With no real plan in mind, I just went ahead and started hauling old panels out and see what I could come up with. And uh, I managed to find a couple of fenders off a 58 Chev 5 ton truck. Uh, the rear back section off a of 49 Crosley. Uh, a roof section off a of 58 Chev. And a trunk lid off a of 60 Pontiac. I hold on to everything. I just started piecing things together and cutting as I went. Uh, there was no cut butt on this. I wasn't sure what this was going to come out like. So everything was just a lap joint and welded together. I uh, never got fussy on trying to have everything perfect. Uh, it was just a little project that I was playing around with in the evenings after work. So uh, I was pretty pleased it started to come together. Uh, I ended up having to get some sheet steel and close in the bottom side of it. And just ran a, a bend, a little bead around the bottom side of it just to give it a little bit of strength. And to follow along with the... Um, Crosley rear end section and so then I just tack welded it all together. Uh, you got to keep in mind now this was just a, a little project that I was just banging together. It was nothing for a customer or nothing so I was having a bit of fun with it in the evenings. One of the issues you'll have anytime you build a little trailer is trying to find a way to keep it watertight. All I went and did on this one was I raised up the lip all the way around the opening one inch by bending over the metal just on a 90 degree bend. Then I turned around and made up these little corners um, just out of pieces of steel and welded them in place. And then all I used was a trunk seal off a scrap car. This one here I think came off a Taurus wagon and ran that all the way around it. And that's what the actual hatch will seal on. Now it was time to move on to the hatch itself. I took the 60 Pontiac trunk lid and cut the center of the skin out of it. It was nice and uh, flat, had no creases running in it. It had a nice little crown and it would roll off one end. Um, all I went and did is I cut it. I bent the edge down on a 90 and rounded out the corners. It was cut a little bit bigger than the opening of the trailer. I didn't want to get too carried away with any type of hinge mechanism. All I went and did is I found a couple of gate hinges 
at the local hardware store and I basically set them up so they would mount onto the panel itself. The panel would sit about an inch off, off the back of the trailer but up towards where the hinges are to it would flow down and that was the natural flow of the trunk lid. Opening and closing it worked best kind. Uh, all I did is I put a little steel frame on the inside of it and uh, reinforced the hinges on the, the hatch side and also I welded up the a plate, a 1-8 plate underneath the body side to give the hinge some strength so it was, the hinge wasn't just hanging off the metal itself. All I went and did then is I just going through my junk pile, I found an old prop rod, what it come off of, I don't know and that's all I used to hold it up. Now it's time to move on to the frame. I had an old uh, teardrop project frame that I had built and uh, I never ever got around to using it. So I took that and I used that when I first started building this trailer and used the measurements which is four feet wide. And that's why I built the trailer as wide as I did because of this frame that I had. And all I went and did then is I just shortened it up so it fit down inside the body of the trailer. And then I just capped off the ends and the front and that were turns with little sections of steel which I welded on. Sometimes you find a floor pan in the strangest of places. I was getting ready to get rid of my old plow truck and I noticed a roof on it. So I cut the roof off it to hold on to it and uh, it worked out perfectly because I used that for the bottom of the trailer. And uh, what I went and did is up towards the front of the trailer I put the, the beads that faded out so that the, uh, I could seal the front of the trailer up nice. But on the back side, I let the beads run off. I never sealed where the beads were. I left them open so if any water did get in the trailer, it would run out through these out the back of the trailer. If you notice that the trailer has the frame inside of it. Reason why we done this is because we wanted to put like a plywood floor in the bottom of it that would uh, you know any moisture or water or anything that got down inside the trailer would not be on the floor itself it'd go underneath it into the, the steel frame and then basically run out to the little excess holes I had left in the back of the trailer all I did then is I just welded it all up spot welded it on and sealed it all up while I was busy making all the body panels for this little trailer uh, Bill took on the task of doing all the heavy structural work uh, one of the things he took on was the actual axle itself. We had to make an axle for this using AMC stub axles. Bill had to make a plating system for the actual stub axle to bolt on and then put gussets on it to give it strength so it wouldn't bow. With the axle installed, the little trailer is starting to take shape. Figuring out a latching mechanism, something we could lock, uh, we managed to come up with something. Uh, Bill dug into his little pile of Jeep parts and we found a door latch off a Land Cruiser. We used that and an old garage door handle that had a lock and key on it, so it worked out perfectly. And then I just put a little tab on the end of it for the, uh, the latch to actually ride on to be able to lock. Well, I got busy uh, stripping the body and getting it prepped for filler and uh, primer. Uh, Bill took on the task of making up the actual hitch to go on the back of the tea bucket. Now, this wasn't an easy task to take on because there was a lot of things going on on the back of the car that we had to take into consideration. Also, I had the frame fully painted in this car and I didn't want to weld to the car itself, so this trailer hitch had to bolt on. It had to be strong and I didn't want to have it um, you know, too much work done to the car. All we ended up having to do was drill a few holes and uh, she was the best going. So like, it was amazing the job that he done with this. Uh, there was a lot of thought he put into this and uh, many hours of just trying to sit there looking at it to size it all up. But he took on the task and done a fantastic job. Now that we had the trailer hitch all made and mounted on the car, it was time to figure out uh, the actual tongue on this because we wanted the trailer to sit level so it was time to roll it out by the door and uh, 
size up everything because we we're going to have to uh, do some modifications to the tongue on the trailer to be level with the car. One thing we noticed is that the, the trailer and car together was extremely long. Now, this ran into a dilemma for us because one problem we got here was that we have a boat ride and uh, on the boat itself, you get charged extra when you were over so many feet. Now, I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't think it was 20 or 22 feet or something like that. With the trailer where it is two, uh, we found that we were over the 22 foot range. So we had to find some possible way that we can get the car with the trailer and get it under 20 feet. So here is how we fixed the problem of the boat. Uh, we figured out a way that we could have a retractable tongue on the trailer. We mounted two uh, pieces of square stock, I think they were two and a half by two and a half, onto the bottom of the trailer. We had a bolt hole mounted in the front section of the, the brackets and we had it so that a two by two piece would slide through to the rails. Now when you're towing it down the road, uh, you pull the, the tongue all the way out and put a bolt in the first hole and um, bolted up tight so that way it was permanently part of the trailer and the square stock on the back held everything square and you could tow it down the road. Now when we got to the boat, just before we went in to get measured, uh, all we had to do was take this one bolt out, slide the trailer forward on the uh, two by two and there was another hole uh, ahead on the actual tongue itself that would line up with the hole in the, the bottom of the trailer and we just put the bolt on that and that would shorten up the trailer by I think it was about two feet and all we did then was we just drove onto the boat uh, with a little short trailer on the back of it and then when we got to the other side we just undid the bolt pulled the trailer out and uh, bolted it on in the long location so the trailer was easy to tow. Now it was time for to get this thing ready for paint. Um, all we went and did is uh, we went and filled it, then we, re then we primed it, we sanded it, and then we reprimed it again. While I was finishing getting everything uh, filled and primed, Bill went ahead and uh, finished off the trailer hitch and got the angles proper so that the trailer was level behind the hot rod. Uh, here is a quick look at the receiver in its full out position and when it slid forward for when it's on the boat. So all was left now was to give it a coat of black. Uh, we used trim clad semi-gloss mixed one to one with thinners. I've used this concept many times. My old black chef is painted with it. It has a real nice sheen to it and it dries nice and hard. Uh, on the hinges uh, we just put stainless uh, carriage head bolts in to hold the hinges in place and along with the chrome garage door handle it looked really nice. Out the back we had uh, a couple of uh, old round lights, I don't know where they came from, but um, I had them kicking in a collection of parts that I had floating around that were given me for years. That and a little license plate holder had a light in it, and uh, the trailer was done. Well there you have it, the little trailer we built back in 2011, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, we packed up a bit of gear and we went off to Moncton, so I've got a few pictures here I'm going to show you of our trip to Moncton, we met a few interesting people. Anyway, I hope the tips are good and until next time.